Thank you, Mr. President. This week, the Senate is taking a historic step in the fight to protect children online by bringing the Bipartisan Kids Online Safety Act to the floor. Last Congress, Senator Blumenthal and I introduced COSA following disturbing reports that Meta leadership knew its platform, Instagram, is toxic to teenage girls, causing rising rates of eating disorders and mental health issues. But Meta downplayed these harms in public. During a series of five subcommittee hearings, we heard testimony from social media companies, advocates, and parents on the repeated failures of tech giants to protect kids, to protect them from pro-suicide content, from drug dealers, from sexual predators, from eating disorder content, from human traffickers, and so much more. For years, big tech giants refused to meaningfully address these problems, but that changes with COSA, which will finally hold them accountable. Congress has not passed a major law to protect children online since 1998, and a lot has changed in the last 25 years. But this moment would have been impossible without the hundreds of parents, including many who have tragically lost their children to social media harms. They've traveled to Washington over the past several years to share their heartbreaking stories and to demand action to protect our children. Senator Blumenthal and I could not have accomplished this without their voices, and I want to thank all of our friends and our allies for their work in getting this bill to the floor. One thing is certain, moms on a mission have always proven to be an unstoppable force, and indeed they are. I also want to thank Leader Schumer, Commerce Committee Chair Cantwell, Ranking Member Cruz, and our 68 Senate co-sponsors for helping us get here. Once the Senate formally passes COSA, our work is not done. We must ensure that the House quickly passes this bill and sends it to the President's desk. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the next portion of my remarks be placed separately in the record. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. President. Recently, my fellow Tennesseans have had a lot to celebrate. Late last month, the Tennessee Volunteers baseball team made history, defeating the Texas A&M Aggies in the College World Series to win the program's first national title. This is a tremendous accomplishment for the incredible players and coaches for the University of Tennessee and indeed for our entire state. But for those of us who followed the Vols' historic season, this national championship came as no surprise. In total, they tallied 60 wins this season, becoming the first team in the Southeastern Conference to ever reach this milestone. UT had five players who hit 20 or more home runs this season. The first time that has ever happened in NCAA history. And along the way to the College World Series, the team won both the SEC regular season and the SEC term tournament title, becoming just the fourth program in history to capture all three titles in the same season. It is no exaggeration to say that this team is one of the greatest in college baseball history, a testament to players, coaches, and staff's hard work on and off the field. That's why I introduced a resolution alongside Senator Haggerty, joined by Tennessee's entire House delegation, to officially congratulate the student athletes, coaches, administrators, and fans on a truly incredible season. I know Tennesseans will remember the Vols' historic 2024 season for many years to come. 
Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the next portion of my remarks be placed separately in the record. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. On Saturday, July 13th, our nation narrowly avoided a catastrophe with the failed assassination attempt of President Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania. In the wake of this disturbing attack, I'm grateful that President Trump is safe and recovering and join Tennesseans and Americans in praying for the two victims who were critically injured. Tragically, our nation lost a hero in the attack. Corey Comparator, a rally attendee, was killed while protecting his wife and daughter from gunfire. This assassination attempt was a shocking act of political violence, and one agency more than any other was responsible for preventing it. That is the Secret Service. But as reports continue to pile up about the Secret Service's failures leading up to the attempt, I know Tennesseans and Americans have so many questions. How was the shooter allowed on a structure so close to the rally with a clear line of sight to President Trump? And why were there no agents on that roof? How is it possible, as senators learned in a briefing with Secret Service and the FBI last week, that Secret Service agents knew about a threat before President Trump walked on stage, yet they did nothing to prevent him from going on stage? How was the shooter allowed to scope out the rally grounds with the range finder, a device that is often used by snipers to measure the distance to a target, even after he was spotted by law enforcement? Why was the assassin able to fly a drone and take footage of the rally grounds just before the speech? And why, as the agency has finally acknowledged after initially denying it, why did the Secret Service turn down previous requests from President Trump's security detail for more resources to protect him? To be sure, many Secret Service agents bravely put their lives on the line to get President Trump to safety following the assassination attempt. We are grateful for them. But as a whole, the agency failed its sole objective, which was to protect the protectee, in this case, former President Trump. Yet Secret Service Director Cheadle has repeatedly refused to explain why this tragedy happened on her watch. When my colleagues and I pressed her for answers last week, she ran away, and during the House Oversight hearing on Monday, she continued to stonewall, repeatedly claiming that she is unable to provide answers while her agency investigates the operational failures leading up to the assassination attempt. This is inexcusable. While Director Cheadle has finally done the right thing and resigned, Tennesseans and the American people still deserve answers about how her agency let President Trump come within inches of being killed by an assassin's bullet. The Secret Service has the duty to send another representative equipped to answer these questions when the Senate Judiciary Committee holds its hearing on the circumstances that led to the attempted assassination of former President Trump. While we await answers, there is one thing we do know. If Director Cheadle had done her job and upheld her agency's zero-fail mission, this tragedy would never have happened. I yield the floor.